application of normal distribution and there would be various other application but these are just the basic application of normal distribution so coming to outline of today's lecture i will keep a recap of normal distribution from the application point of view afterward uh, we will go to discuss uh, application of normal distribution from the various perspective okay so coming to that first part uh, as a recap of normal distribution last uh, lecture we had already seen that uh, normal distribution and a standard normal distribution so all about that in uh, case of uh, uh, studying normal distribution you have to focus on norm, a standard normal distribution so uh, how we get a standard normal distribution and why it is very much essential those things i had already de described that a standardization pattern so what is the a standardization pattern so if you are having a random variable x then what you do just come up uh, expectation of that random variable easily you can compute expectation that we general generally denoted by mu and it happens to be what we compute expectation of that random variable because the, regarding that random variable we know the probability law uh, through which we can get uh, the corresponding protein density function if uh, it happens to be a continuous random variable so we know uh, these two things with the help of these two things we can easily compute uh, two important uh, measure of central tendency one is that we are calling it expectation another we are calling it variance so we can compute these two things easily uh, variance it would be we generally we denote it by uh, sigma square so you know sigma square is meant for a uh, actual variance of the random variable that means you need to know the distribution then you will be able to compute variance so variance happens to be that we had already seen from the definition it, it happens to be expectation of a square of mean deviation a square of mean deviation so that means these th these two things we had already seen that these are very much uh, uh, essential to know once you are having a random variable with corresponding pdf because they are these are just depicting all the possible value of x in a really very interesting way why because we know that uh, x vary along this horizontal axis x is observing along horizontal axis so what would be mu mu is talking about the central representation that means it is the central point of all the possible value of x and what is the sigma sigma square we are calling it variance and it will imply that sigma is what a square root of the variance that means a square root of variance so that means sigma and mu is having and mu both are having the same unit so keep on <coughs> sigma is talking about uh, variability of the value of x so if you uh, vary along um, horizontal axis about mu so variation is happening that you had already seen neighborhood concept so variation so about uh, that means sigma amount left sigma mu plus sigma one sigma amount left uh, right and one sigma amount left in the in the what unit of sigma you can move from uh, mu left and right so this this one is one sigma deviation we can say, say that uh, this uh, one is talking about one sigma de deviation likewise you can go for two sigma de deviation this would be uh, mu plus twice of sigma and this point would be mu minus twice of sigma so in the order of sigma you can move rightward or left uh, leftward if you are having this information and in order to that uh, these uh, move, uh, deviation will, would continue, contain various possible value of x so uh, if you are having this situation so what is happening that uh, definitely mu and sigma happens to be uh, very much uh, uh, number these are number okay so what you do you can simplify this number further by a standardization generally a standard re random variable be denoted by z and how we do a standardization and the, that random variable also will have a distribution that we will call it uh, distribution of the uh, given a standard random variable so we do a standardization it how so we deviate first the random variable by expectation of of x after that we divide it by 
uh, standard deviation and it will force that uh, we are getting a standard random variable whose mean is zero because it is very much easy to visualize zero where it would be zero in axis is zero happens to be the center point uh, uh, middle point of axis that's why it is very easy to visualize and what we what would be the variance variance easily you can find variance would be one unit variance so you know you, here mu and sigma may be anything but once you are rising then you are able to visualize a specific value of mu and sigma so that's why rationalization process is very much essential and we had already seen that uh, standard normal distribution and the plot pdf of a standard normal distribution it is symmetric about origin so that's why i am saying that uh, always go with uh, uh, a standard normal distribution if you are having any kind of normal distribution with any mean and variance so why because we know the corresponding cdf nature of corresponding cdf as well it is sigmoid and the concavity of sigmoid function is changing at zero it is changing at zero so that's where this one is pdf of uh, normal a standard normal random variable generally we denote it by n n mean for uh, normal and what is the mean of standard normal random variable it is zero what is the variance it is one so generally we denote it by this one so the first plot is it is plot of uh, pdf of a standard normal random variable so we denote it by so f of z and the second plot it is the plot of uh, cdf cumulative distribution of a standard normal random variable and cumulative distribution function we denote it by phi of z or simply phi you can denote it by phi so phi is coming along vertical axis so these two plot these two are very much fixed the notation would be not changed and if you are taking any general kind of random variable that time the cdf will have notation capital f but when you are just taking a standard normal random variable then that time this kind of fine would be fixed okay so we had already covered everything okay so just we will see one interesting uh, characterization of uh, z that a standard normal random variable from the application point of view so what is that characterization so here we will see it so if z is a standard normal random variable then um, z can be transformed to any normal variable how that you first scale z by the uh, by an amount sigma and after that translate so here a scaling here z by amount sigma and then you are translating it by mu so in that process when you perform this linear transformation it is just a linear transformation of z so the transform random variable x it would be what it would be a normal random variable with mean mu that translated part with variance sigma square that sigma is coming as a, a scaling factor of the standard normal random variable so any standard normal uh, if you are having a, uh, a standard normal random variable we can always transform that to any desired normal random variable with desired mean and variance okay and and conversely also if suppose we are having any normal random variable then we can get back our standard normal random variable through this transformation this iteration process simply we say that so both are true that means if you are having a standard normal random variable you can transform that to any normal random variable with desired mean and variance desired mean and variance is directly defined by this affine transformation this one is simply we are saying that i had already mentioned that what is meaning of affine transformation that means a scaling plus translation it is just uh, talking about affine transformation so it is more than linear if just you focus on this one it is it would be a linear transformation but if you are just uh, uh, including the translation version uh, translation part as well then it is talking about affine transformation so affine is more like that uh, very much similar to equivalent to linear transformations overall you can say that it is a linear transformation now uh, our uh, concept is that uh, uh, here z is known to us that means we know the uh, pdf of z f of z it is very much symmetric about origin also we know the cdf of z both things are known to us okay 
but we don't know the uh, CDF and PDF of X, X that transform version of Z, we don't know. So how we can easily find those things? So those things we will see it here in term of uh, CDF of Z, we will see it. So we know the from the if X is a um, normal random variable, which we got it by a fine transformation of Z, then how we can find CDF of X? So from the definition of CDF, it is talking uh, uh, capital F of X, is, uh, what does it define? It, it is talking about probability that X is observing value up to X. And now we come to see that uh, what is X? X is actually a fine function of Z. So that's why we are replacing X by the as a, by this a fine function of Z and just do the simplification here. So remember that we don't have much idea about X about, apart from this relation. Only this relation we know that. Okay, and we having we are having every information about Z. That means we know the PDF, we know the CDF. Okay, so we try to take benefit of the all correct information of Z. So just we do here, we know that uh, sigma and mu, it is our interest. We have to uh, come up with those kind of value, those value of sigma and uh, mu in order to define x. Okay, and uh, this x is a specific value. Okay a particular value so here z is random in nature rest of things are just particular kind of things so we do simplification here we do simplify after that what what we observe we observe that uh, this property has been converted into uh, this property that uh, z is ob observing value up to this x minus mu divided by sigma so this simply you can say that what is, what is this one you can give name to this one is z a small z so z is that uh, this property is simply you can say that property that z is observing value this random variable z is observing value up to z so simply what does it define so it define that uh, it is defining uh, cdf of z remember that it is defining cdf of z okay it is no more cdf of x it is cdf of z so we have already seen that cdf of for x has been expressed in the cdf of z where z is what where z is x minus mu divided by sigma so here we don't need to find cdf of x explicitly what we do cdf of x we can easily find as a function of cdf of z so that relation is really very interesting here this relation you can observe like this way so this one is one story that to find cdf of x that x happens to be an affine transformation of z okay now next what we will do we will try to find pdf once we are having idea of cdf of the random variable x then we can find pdf and we know that in case of continuous random variable uh, pdf of a random variable x it would be what it would be just derivative of the cdf derivative of the cdf that means with respect to x derivative of cdf of the same distribution okay CD, cumulative distribution function it is this relation we had already seen in the definition of cdf okay so same process we, we will apply it here and after that what we will get uh, so we know that the pdf of x it is what it, it happens to be uh, derivative of CDF of X okay but we have already seen the CD, CDF of X express as uh, in term of CDF of Z so we are just uh, getting replacing this CDF of X in term of CDF of uh, uh, Z with this argument X minus mu divided by Sigma so we need to differentiate this function with respect to DX so we just we need to apply here uh, what we, what we need to apply just apply chain rule that means uh, with chain rule uh, this uh, first we will differentiate this one with respect to the uh, inner argument after that the, uh, this argument will be differentiated by x okay so in that process you can simply write it like this way uh, one by sigma when you are going to differentiate through chain rule that this uh, uh, argument of phi with x then you will get just one by sigma okay and uh, uh, you know that from the chain rule how you can differentiate so chain rule you can that uh, uh, chain rule is very simple pi of x minus mu 
डिवाइड बाय सिग्मा यू आर डिफ्रेंसिएटिंग विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू द सेम आर्ग्यूमेंट एक्स माइनस सिग्मा एंड आफ्टर वर्ड व्हाट यू डू यू डिफ्रेंस द आर्ग्यूमेंट विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू एक्स आर्ग्यूमेंट ऑफ फाइव एक्स माइनस म्यू With respect to x, the differentiating. That's why uh, this part of four chain rule, it will converted into one by sigma. As the one by sigma is not, it is a fixed number, so you can write it uh, after this uh, first derivative or before. There would be no any issue. So we know that uh, uh, we are able to write uh, density of x as one by sigma type. Uh, pi dash uh, derivative of pi with respect to this argument. Remember that what is I had already mentioned that there is a difference between uh, what is meaning of this f dash. If anyone write, say that what is meaning of f dash, that means f dash means this dash is talking about derivative of of the function with respect to the argument. Whatever argument it would be here with respect to that. Here argument is this. So that's why this dash is talking about derivative with respect to this argument, not like with the derivative of this one with respect to x. So remember that dash is talking about deriv derivative with respect to the concern argument. So remember that. So this one is getting this notation. And what does it? It is what? It is talking about uh, simply uh, uh, CDF, uh, CDF of Z and derivative of CDF of Z and so if you differentiate CDF of Z you will get PDF of Z with this argument. Remember that argument is changed. So here we know that uh, PDF of Z is what? It is very much symmetric. Uh, it is talking about uh, e to the power minus Z square by twice of Sigma twice of sigma divided by one by so twice into sigma is equal to one sigma would not come here. Uh, Z square uh, CDF of uh, uh, PDF of Z is uh, one by a square root of four, uh, pi this is the uh, what it is pdf of z so we know that if you, if you substitute z by x minus mu by sigma we need to here z is equal to due to the transformation function x is defined from there we see that z is equal to x minus sigma divided by x minus mu divided by sigma so if you substitute it will be converted into pdf so this one is what we see that it is actually pdf of uh, any uh, gaussian random variable or normal random variable with uh, um, expectation mu and variance sigma sigma so usually we got the pdf of x so that uh, through that transformation okay so so that's where here again we have, we have expressed pdf of x in the term of pdf of uh, z cdf of x in the term of cdf of y so these would help to find probability of, of any event so how it would uh, with the help of function pi okay cdf four. so how so suppose we are having event of interest that uh, x is observing value between a to b and we are able, willing to compute probability that x is observing value between a to b so what would be this probability it is just difference of these two value of cdf okay so what we do so uh, before going to compute this one here we will convert this uh, normal uh, this event with respect to normal random variable into equivalent form of uh, uh, what uh, with respect to a standard normal random variable so uh, we do a standardization of the event as well uh, we know that uh, this uh, random variable x would have mean mu and uh, variance sigma square anyhow you will have idea so how we can convert into uh, equivalent uh, uh, random event event with respect to uh, what z 
with respect to zero so that we can take benefit of this one so we do here rationalization that means throughout this inequality we first deviate by mean after that we will divide by sigma so when we deviate mean then we have to deviate each each involve uh, term so we are deviating each term by mu uh, after that we are dividing by sigma so left hand part it will be, it becomes a minus mu divided by sigma and then middle one the random variable it becomes x minus mu divided by sigma then it becomes uh, right hand part it becomes b minus mu by sigma okay and what is middle one this random variable is what a standardized form of x so simply we can write it like this way that uh, the random variable z the standard normal random variable z is taking value between a minus mu divided by sigma and and it is taking value between a minus mu divided by sigma and b, b minus mu divided by sigma and we know that the how we can compute probability of this one uh, difference we know that here in the standard normal random variable if you try to see observability of the possible value of z so here it simply say that uh, uh, suppose this one this quantity it is here uh, here it is okay a minus we are taking uh, it may be positive it may be negative i don't know for simplicity we say that uh, a minus mu divided by sigma is positive okay we don't know where uh, what value of this one so definitely this quantity would be less than this quantity we know that it is very and b minus okay. b minus mu by sigma so if you are willing to find the probability that z is between these two how we can find so from the definition of cdf we know that uh, this value it would be uh, phi of b minus sigma and this value up to probability up to this it would be phi of a minus mu divided by sigma so what is the probability that x is observed z is observing value of these two it would be just difference of these two value so just from the definition of cdf easily we will get so this is the this is the probability of observing uh, this uh, event and hence this event is equivalent to this so we are getting probability of this one okay so everything is already clear geometrically you can see all these things here with respect to normal easily you can see all those whatever desire so here other things we will discuss it is uh, very much essential to estimate probability of uh, uh, what we call it with respect to any uh, random variable so here we are taking few example so here our plan is to estimate probability of k successes in n trial so you had already seen that there are k successes in n number of trials so usually this uh, probability if you are computing here if computing word is there then you have to go through binomial that means that corresponding random variable is binomially distributed with given parameter that means the number of trial would be given to you and probability of success of each trial would be given to you so with respect to that we know the corresponding pd is cd sorry corresponding uh, probability mass function it happens to be a binomial probability mass function uh, and by n choose k uh, p to the power k but what will happen that this this computation is always taking time so we want to go to use this uh, probability mass function in place of that uh, in order to compute probability of an event a specific event what we will do in place of that we will apply certain kind of approximation to normal distribution okay so what situation is coming like this way so consider a binomial distribution uh, with uh, parameter n equal to 100 and probability of success 0.5 okay 
and now uh, we want to compute probability of tail that when x is observing value greater than or equal to uh, 55 okay uh, we uh, we have to compute uh, this uh, probability okay so what is happening that we will not apply this normal distribution probability mass function okay in place of that we will uh, estimate this probability by introducing a very closest fit of the binomial distribution by normal distribution normal distribution so for defining normal distribution you have to come up with the mean and standard deviation or mean and variance so we are having binomial distribution so from there easily we can compute those two uh, parameter that means uh, mean and variance so simply if you are having binomial distribution what is the mean of binomial distribution anyone would like to highlight what is the mean of binomial distribution anyone anyone just reply it don't take much time yeah very nice so here mu easily you are getting it by multiplying the both uh, parameter which are involved in the process of defining binomial distribution so n time p that means you are multiplying 100 with 0.5 that means 50 so you got mean and likewise what is the variance anyone anyone what, what is the variance how we define variance of a binomial distribution remember that when we are able to compute uh, mu and sigma square when the complete distribution of x is given okay what is that uh, n p q is actually uh, i haven't mentioned q call it 1 minus okay so if you simplify what would be the value what would be value you can easily see it it is 25 it is equal to 25 p is given n is given so easily you can compute so we are having mean of the binomial distribution variance of the binomial distribution now what we do we are trying to approximate uh, this uh, modeling of uh, value of possible value of x by normal distribution so we will define a closest fit normal distribution remember, remember that closest fit normal distribution we are defining what does it mean it say that we are defining a normal distribution with mean of x and a standard variance of x so mean of x is 50 a standard variance of uh, x is 50 so with the help of that we are defining a normal distribution and with that we are naming it y and with this normal distribution we will estimate this food we will estimate so how we will see this see the estimation process so here simply we see that x is we are trying to compute this tail probability that when x is observing greater than or equal to 55 it is very much approximately equal to y so we know that x is taking value in a discrete fashion okay but y is a closest fit of uh, uh, normal distribution uh, this binomial distribution but and y is taking value continuously so this approximation would be definitely we we won't say uh, this one is exactly exactness of 55 would not come so we have to take a little bit of the deviation of about 5 what is that little bit deviation that we say that 0.5 deviation so when x is taking value greater than or equal to 5 or so that in that case uh, there is a deviation of 0.5 so that's why we observe y is taking value greater than or equal to 5 54.5 so this deviation is coming okay and and hence we can say that uh, this probability tail probability is equal to we know that this one is also tail probability with respect to normal random variable and here uh, it is not easy to compute with respect to cdf because we are having information about cdf only in the normal table so we have to take benefit of that so from there what we do we convert this one in term of cdf so what would be that this one is, uh, we know that it is talking about tail probability so one minus this one it would be the uh, in the perspective of uh, cdf one minus this cdf y is observing value up to uh, 5.5 that is this up to function up to it is defining uh, what it is defining cdf of normal random variable y and after that what we do uh, we asynchronize this normal random variable y how we asynchronize we asynchronize by the applying the transformation that we deviate first to uh, y with corresponding mean 
mean is here 55 mean is 50 we deviated by mean after that we divided by the corresponding standard deviation what is that a square of 25 is 5 so we divided by 5 so after doing this process so this process uh, this extraction process we do both side so in uh, left hand side this y will be converted into z due to this uh, standardization process and the right hand side it would be converted into this fixed quantity because everything is fixed in right hand side so what does it see if you simplify further then this one is just talking about uh, that uh, probability uh, probability that z is observing value up to point negative uh, negative 0.9 so what is this one it is at least cdf it is what cdf of normal random variable z at point negative 0.5 okay and uh, here in the normal table value of cdf for negative value of z would be not given to you so you have to convert it uh, uh, from the positive value of z due to symmetric property so easily you can say that you can compute this value so here you can see that here uh, it is what one minus this value would be this transformation we had one minus phi of 0.5 Nine. Five of 0.9. Tell me what would be the possible value of this one? Anyone would like to guess it from the normal table? table if you haven't uh, simplified further, so one and minus one will cancel out. Finally, it will have just equal to 0.9. Tell me what is the approximate if the normal table is given to you what would be the approximate value of this one from the normal table it would be given to you but if just i am trying to guess what would be the possible value of 0.9 anyone whether it would be uh, less than 0.5 or would be greater than 0.5 anyone would like to guess from the just see the plot of cdf of four five CDF5 or CDF of a standard normal random variable. So plot is coming like this way. From the here, where would be 0.5? The point 0.5, this this point is this point is zero. This value is 0.5. This is two one. Okay. this value up to this is 0.5 so here here what is value of phi of 0 anyone would like to highlight what is the value of phi of 0 anyone what is the value of phi of 0 yeah very nice because it is at the middle 0 is at the middle 0 0.5 but if i am asking here 0 0.9 it would be somewhere here what would be value of uh, just uh, you can say approximate value what would be value of point uh, value of phi at point 0.9 what would be value yeah so that situation will come here so through that you can compute all those things okay Now, uh, we will see further, uh, I am generalizing it, this concept here, but uh, where is, uh, okay, so you can compute like this in that perspective. So, question is coming here, like this way, and remember that what is 0.5 equivalent to if you see from the perspective of this normal variable it would be something else okay uh, so here if you are trying to compute uh, probability that of any random variable this one is definitely a discrete random variable that x is observing value equal to k then how you can write this one the from uh, uh, this one from equivalent uh, closest normal fit that means uh, this event x y equal to k from the perspective of closest fit to y as a normal random variable it would be equivalent to that y's observing value 
between just little deviation about k so 0.5 deviation you have to take it generally we are taking 0.5 deviation so why because y is taking value in continuum fashion x is taking value in uh, discrete fashion and y is an approximation of x so uh, that means uh, distribution of y how we define it uh, by taking uh, borrowing mean and variance of x so that's why we say that this y it, it is a normal uh, closest fit of x so that's where this property is equal to this property and we can compute this property how by uh, performing uh, uh, that uh, res uh, same respective what we call it uh, summarization that means uh, what would be mean of this one because it has been borrowed from uh, borrowed from this uh, 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 binomial distribution x so, so the mean and Variance would be borrowed from x uh, for y. Mean would be np and variance would be np times 1 minus p. Okay, so so everything. So we do a summarization of y in term of z. So in that process, this is the process of a summarization. So we deviate by mean and after that uh, divide by standard deviation. So we are getting this one and this would be what it would be converted into z and hence we can easily find the property of x uh, equal observing value k it would be uh, very much near to this property difference of what we call it uh, cdf cdf of z so through this uh, uh, here k would be given here n would be given here p would be given so we can compute all this property easily we can compute so i will take one more problem uh, that uh, uh, regarding snowfall and up, after that we will go to detect uh, we'll talk about one interesting problem from that uh, error detection that error detection or uh, error or denoising or signal detection if you are just uh, having a signal uh, which is noisy in nature so what we do our interest is what just on signal we don't uh, don't need to uh, proceed with noise so we have to uh, either uh, de process, perform the denoising process or we just we have to detect signal both are equivalent problem signal detection or denoising de that means removing out or filtering out the noise so both are the same problem so those things we will discuss so first problem like uh, the annual snowfall at a particular ge geographical place is modeled as a random variable with a mean 60 inch and standard deviation 20 inch okay then we have to compute what is the property that uh, uh, this year's snowfall is greater than or equal to 80 inch so we have to look for if you, it is modeled by a uh, normal distribution then we have to look for uh, expectation of that and standard deviation of that if it is not given then we will talk about estimation process later uh, estimated value of mean and standard estimated value of standard division later uh, that means sample mean and sample standard division sample division will talk later okay but here already it is given uh, that uh, this uh, snowfall is modeled by uh, normal distribution with this mean and this standard division and hence we get uh, variance okay so we are willing to compute this property so how we can compute so again we have to convert this uh, suppose we are denoting this uh, snowfall uh, amount of snowfall by x then uh, what we have to rise this one into z so this is the summarization process we have uh, converted x into z as, as a standard uh, normal random variable and uh, we are having a, x uh, mean of x 32 that means uh, mu is equal to 32 as standard deviation is equal to 20 so everything we are having so we we are willing to compute the desired property that uh, x is observing value greater than or equal to it is okay so this property uh, this tail property we are willing to compute so how we can compute this one so we could compute this one with the help of uh, uh, summarization process that means property that x is observable value greater than or equal to 80 it would be what it would be it is a tail property so this tail property what it is 1 minus uh, the cdf of uh, x at 80 so you can replace this relation everyone know very easily you can say that okay and now what we do here we are performing a summarization then that means we deviate x by the mean of x okay and after that we divide by sigma both side we perform a summarization operation both side so uh, this uh, x would be what it would be converted into z 
and the right hand side this 80 is constant it would be converted into 20 by 20 and hence 1 so that means uh, computing this tail probability is just equivalent to what uh, you are just uh, find the value of cdf of z at 1 and subtract it from 1 okay so this value and we know that uh, we had already uh, from the normal table easily you can see that where would be 1 always visualize uh, cdf of normal a standard normal distribution so it is a sigmoidal kind of thing so here coming you will always have idea so zero is at the center this one is phi of phi of z so here zero at zero we know that phi of zero is equal to 0.5 and one is coming right of zero so definitely uh, value of phi of oh, one it would be greater than 0.5 and value of phi of one is what it is 0.8413 from the normal table easily you can find so uh, approximation is coming so it will go on like uh, this decimal uh, uh, expression it will go on so just we are taking approximation here so this uh, property uh, this tail property is equal to 1 minus this quantity that means approximately equal to this um, property that point uh, 1586 so approximately 16 percent you can say that what is the probability approximately what is the snowfall probability and that one is greater than 80 inch that one is approximately 60 16 percent so that is the desired probability you can compute with the help of normal table you don't need to come up with all the distribution function everything just see the normal table from there easily you can compute okay so i will now talk about uh, next problem that one is uh, signal detection so what is happening that uh, in there is a communication system in which a binary message is transmitted okay and the signal is uh, that from that communication system uh, the uh, sender is uh, sending signal either minus one or one okay and the communication channel uh, is corrupted with additive noise okay and the noise is what normally is distributed with mean zero and various sigma square so mean zero various variance mean of the noise is zero and variance is sigma square apart from uh, that we don't know much okay later so what is uh, happening that in that process the receiver uh, receives signal okay receiver receive uh, receiver receives signal uh, noisy signal simply because due to this additive noise so this is then what is happening that uh, then receiver have to infer what kind of kind of signal might have sent sender might have sent okay receiver have to infer about that so how it is inferring or how it is concluding the receiver concluding that a minus one or plus one was transmitted if the value received is noisy signal call it y this one is noisy signal so signal is denoted by s and you are <coughs> making it corrupt by adding a noise so additive noise so uh, this receiver is receiving y so uh, receiver will conclude that have to infer that or he have to decrypt what kind of signal might have sent so uh, receiver in that process receiver is concluding or inferring that uh, minus one would have sent if uh, the receiver what receives signal noisy signal happens to be less than zero and uh, otherwise uh, plus one might have received if the noisy signal is uh, greater than equal to zero so that is the so this is the uh, process and then uh, uh, we have to compute probability of error what is the probability of error so if you geometrically so uh, geometrically if you are willing to see then situation is coming like this way uh, the transmitter is sending signal plus one or minus one noisy this channel is providing noise with mean zero and variance sigma square then this is the noisy uh, signal what you receive you can call it y okay so here uh, receiver infer that if n plus s is greater than equal to zero then your uh, minus plus one might have sent and then when n plus s is less than zero then minus one might have sent so this is simple uh, okay simple process uh, of uh, receiving signal okay so what is happening that there might be uh, 
error so what kind of error there are two error so suppose uh, uh, actually plus one might have sent but the receiver is uh, getting noisy signal which happens to be less than zero that one is an error that means plus one has been sent but uh, receiver is receiving this this uh, y is less than zero so this one is one situation of error another situation of error is uh, minus one might have sent but the receiver is receiving uh, saying that value is y sorry y is greater than capital y it would be y is greater than equal to zero so these are the situation of error so we have to compute these probability these are automatically if you are trying to see here this one is saying that uh, <coughs> if you talk from the uh, noisy singular so i will discuss all these things uh, so let s be the signal and n be the noise so an error occurs when it occurs uh, it occurs if minus one is transmitted and the noise is greater than or equal to one so if noise is greater than or equal to one what does it say if you add signal both side then minus one has been sent then adding signal so n n plus s is equal to n plus s is equal to minus 1 so n minus 1 it becomes n minus 1 so uh, the chance of error is what when this quantity minus 1 is has been sent but uh, we observe the noisy signal it is greater than equal to if you are here here n is greater than equal to uh, 1 and if you are adding s both side okay and s equal to minus 1 so it simply say that uh, n minus uh, 1 n plus s equal to n minus 1 it would be uh, what minus 1 plus 1 means 0 n plus s is greater than or equal to 0 so this is the chance of one error another chance of error is that suppose plus 1 is transmitted and the noise is uh, what noise is less than or equal to minus 1 so if you add here both sides signal s and s is here plus 1 so that means n plus 1 and n n is less than equal to minus 1 okay so for error purpose so what it mean, means the minus 1 plus 1 it is less than 0 this situation these are the situation of yes any question so there, there are two situation of performing error okay in the computation process so in this first case what is the probability of error probability of error is simply equivalent that you are sending minus one but the noise that you, what you are taking noise you are saying that noise is greater than or equal to one if noise is greater than or equal to one then you are receiving a noisy signal that happens to be greater than or equal to zero but you are sending minus one so you have to compute so you have sending minus one but noisy signal is greater than or equal to zero that one is uh, uh, this kind of error one error situation so we have to compute uh, probability of this error so computing probability of this error is equivalent to that uh, just you have to focus on n because you know the distribution of n so here n is what and normally distributed with mean zero and variance sigma square okay so we have to compute probability of error is equal to probability that n is observing value greater than or equal to n so in that situation you will observe noisy signal greater than or equal to zero if minus one might have transmitted so simplify to compute this probability so this probability is equal to one minus phi of n phi n less than one okay now yeah, n is normally distributed so what we have to do we have to convert n into a standard normal random variable so how we can convert so we deviate this one by mean mean is zero so there is no issue in deviation and after that we divide it by the standard deviation so that's why in that process this uh, n minus zero divided by sigma it will be converted into z and in the uh, that process right hand side will be also converted into one minus zero divided by sigma so uh, this probability that n is less than or equal to one is equal to pi of one minus sigma 1 minus 0 by sigma okay so this probability that n is uh, greater than or equal to a 1 it is equivalent to 1 minus pi of uh, 1 by sigma so here various possible value of uh, sigma you can take uh, based on that you can compute the probability of error so suppose sigma n noise is uh, normally a standard, having a standard normal distribution that means take sigma equal to 1 
so in that case just you have to compute phi of phi of 1 and what is the value of phi of 1 generally in problem phi of 1 would be given uh, phi value of phi would be given so it is 0.8413 so this is the probability of error okay when minus 1 you are send, receiving then but noisy signal uh, sending but noisy signal is greater than equal to 0 okay so in that case this amount of probability uh, this amount of error you that means around 0.16 percent chance that uh, uh, probability error would be there okay in next another situation in second situation that when uh, plus one you are transmitting then and uh, uh, the error chance is what when y the noisy signal is less than zero so what is the probability of error in this case that means n is less than minus one probability that n is less than minus one just simplify all these things again it is coming one minus pi of one by sigma if you are taking sigma equal to one then you are getting this scenario second part it is getting this scenario so both you can say that both amount of error is the same both both are same uh, performing the similar kind of uh, same amount of error numerically same okay okay it is already uh, above 45 minutes so other things we will cover in next class uh, re regarding attendance just